Hello, my name is Steve Bostador with BosTech, and I'm going to demonstrate a feature of VNC Scan that is probably one of the most unsung features in here. Uh, normally, when you think of BosTech, you think of you know deploying VNC, you think of you know remote desktop, you think of all kinds of things, but you don't think very much of just remote screen capture. And this is one of the things that we actually pioneered in. Uh, in the way that we go about doing it, we, not, we weren't necessarily the first program to ever take remote screenshots of computers. But the way that we do it, we do it in a very special way that's extremely lightweight and that doesn't affect the experience of the computer that is being audited and monitored. Now, I'm, I was prompted to make this video after a conversation in the data center with a person who does a lot of teaching for uh, Microsoft certification courses at, at uh, Microsoft certified places and he said this would have been an awesome thing to have when he was teaching his classes last time um, to be able to watch and monitor all the desktops to be able to tell where people are with their labs and you know if they need any help are they struggling and so on so I'm going to show you the feature in action here so if I click on this demo tab that I made here you can see that I've got a series of computers. I left this one blank intentionally because I'm going to show you how to add a computer here too. But you can see I've got an Exchange Server 2010, I've got a Virtual Machine Manager 2012, a couple Windows 7 boxes, and a Windows 8 box here. And the Windows 7 box looks like he was on YouTube and <laughs> get some command windows. They're not really doing much right now though, but uh, when they are doing things, this is not using VNC to get these screenshots if you've ever used BNC before you know that it's not exactly lightweight when you remote control a computer it's it can bog the remote computer down a bit flicker the screen sometimes and it's it's not a very pleasant experience for the computer user who's sitting in front of that desktop at the moment this is extremely lightweight you, if you looked in the task manager you barely even notice anything's happening on these computers they could be running full screen Netflix videos and it wouldn't even you know hiccup in the slightest little bit. So I'm going to show you first uh, how to set this stuff up. The first thing that you're going to want to do anytime you do anything in VNC Scan, no matter what it is, running a script, whatever, is you're going to want to go into the preferences here and you're going to want to make sure that under security and identity you have a login name, password, and if you're on a domain, put the domain in there. And the reason that you need this, even if you're logged in as a domain admin, is because a lot of these functions that VNC Scan does are administrative functions, and it needs to do it by script and WMI and, and PowerShell and a lot of different things that it does on the back end. It needs to know who you are when it's doing this because it needs to pass that authentication out to the remote computers, even if you're logged in as currently as a domain admin. Some of these scripts, especially WMI, just requires that you... Uh, input that information anyways. So make sure we have that in there. I said okay. So from here I'm going to add another computer. I have another computer in, in my lab. It's an XP box. So I'll add XP1 test. We'll resolve its host name or its IP address from the host name. And I'm going to resolve its MAC address just for thoroughness. And then uh, here we are. So I'm going to click on this thing. Now I have an option of either, either adding it to the demo or I can just, I want to take a glance at it first. Before I add it to my demo list here, I want to see is this a computer I really want. So I can go up here and I can just take a quick remote screenshot of the computer. And it's going to bring up the window. First it's going to tell me to wait while it goes and installs the little stub that it needs to put on the remote computer and it's going to snap the screen. Sometimes it takes a couple seconds for the first snap to come through, but after that it's pretty fast. I want to get some continuous captures of this thing though, so let's go up here and let's let's get some continuous things going here. See now it's just going constantly. And what you can see is that's actually watching YouTube video right now. And you can see the screens, you know, of that video. Oh, now it went to screensaver. <laughs> so that, now it's not gonna be very exciting. So I'm going to close out of this. Let me so, so now we've closed out of the uh, XP test here, but now I want to actually add it to my demo over here. How, how do we get it into here? Well, if you right click it, and you go all the way down to the bottom here, you'll see a thumbnails. Now I have an option either to add it, make a new tab, and it'll show up right next to demo as a new tab with a grid of computers, or I can add it to an existing one that I've already made, so I'll just add it to demo. So, we saw a little flicker, now it's over there, and it's getting ready to do its screen captures over here. 
And again, like I said, it takes a couple seconds for the first screenshot to come through sometimes because there's a lot of maintenance that it's kind of doing in the background uh, on the remote computer while it's, while it's doing that. So here it comes through now. You see the screenshot there, and of course it's still at, at its screensaver, its lock screen. So um, a couple other little features with this. Uh, you, could see, you, could, you could scale the thumbnails up and down you know, to whatever size you want them to be. Uh, for this screen size, I like to just keep it about there because then it's a nice, neat little grid. You can choose the interval. Uh, so this is one minute, this is a half a minute, this is 10 seconds, and this is five seconds. So uh, another thing we can do is we can archive these things because a lot of times you want to go back and see what has been happening on the computer over a you know, series of time. So I'm going to right click this thing and I'm going to say archive screen captures. That simple. Now it's just archiving them off to a, a folder somewhere and which, which you can actually choose under your options here where you want the archive path to be. You know, I, I want the archive path for me to be on, let's put it on my my book and I'm going to make a new folder and I'll call it shots. There. All right, so there's that. So it's probably too late for this one because I've already started to capture it, but I can go and I can open the archive folder. I can see what this thing is doing. No, actually it did it. It made a folder under you know shots called the IP address, and now see it, it's throwing in JPEGs every time it captures a JPEG. It's throwing it in there, where I can then later just open it up and arrow through. Now I do want to show you one other little thing. If I right click on a computer, said I want to wake up this XP test one, I can right click it, and I can either choose to VNC to it right there. Or I can just say, I want to go to the computer entry in the managed list. So I'm not sure where it is in there. I'm, just let VNC scan find it for me. So I go to that, and it found it. It took me to the group that it's in, and then it highlighted it for me. So I, I have it right here. I can Now from here, I can VNC to it. Oops, I didn't have a highlight. VNC to it. Log in. Wake it up. <laughs> restart the video if I want. So I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing this video and look for more up on our blog as, uh, as this things happen. I'm going to be creating a series of training videos for VNC scan starting from intro to, uh, to advanced. So be sure to check those out. I'll have a whole separate page for it on vncscan.com. Thank you.